Hi everyone, I am Krista McNamara, Content Channel Director with ABRN Magazine. So many of the advanced features and safety systems on cars today rely on sensors to keep a vehicle's driver and all other drivers on the road safe. But these systems can only work effectively and efficiently if these sensors are properly calibrated. So I'm here with master ASC technicians and trainers Eric Mendoza and Bill Zalakit from Toyota's Collision Repair and Refinish Training Center. Eric is a Toyota Collision Repair and Refinish Training Assistant Manager and Bill is a Lexus Technical and Collision Repair Training Manager. So Bill and Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, well, thanks, Krista. Yeah, Wonderful thanks. to see you today. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. So they're going to talk with us today about proper calibration of two systems that Toyota vehicles use, the pre-collision and the dynamic radar cruise control systems. So Eric and Bill, can you explain to us what these systems do? The pre-collision system uses a millimeter wave radar sensor that's behind the grill in the car and actually looks through the Lexus or Toyota emblem and what it does is it, it looks ahead of the car where the car is going and it's very good at spotting um, items and determining distance. And so if it sees something in the car's path that it thinks might uh, pose a problem or a collision hazard, it can alert the driver, it can uh, pre-charge the brakes and pre-tension the seat belts. Mm -hmm. And so if, if there even is a collision, the collision won't be as severe as it might have been. It's an excellent safety system. So similarly, the dynamic radar cruise control system uses that sensor, and that system will keep you at a specific distance from the vehicle in front of you when the cruise control is operating. So if the vehicle in front of you slows down, you slow down also. And why is calibration of these systems so important? Well, let's think about when you're a kid and you're walking home from school and you look at a there's a wooden fence and you want to see what's behind the fence. You look for a knot hole and you kind of line up your eye with a knot hole, don't you? And, and think about that. If your eye's not right lined up with the knot hole, you're not going to see what you want to see. So this sensor that's behind the grill on the car needs to be positioned so it sees exactly what's in front of the car, uh, not down on the ground or not up in the sky or to the right or left. So two things have to happen. First of all, the car has to be in alignment. So it is, in fact, driving straight down the road. And the second thing is, after the car is in alignment, the sensor has to be aligned to the car. And then if everything's in alignment, that sensor then sees exactly what it's supposed to see and can input good information into the pre-crash computer. Yeah, these sensors need a starting point. They need a, a zero. So that's what the technicians are effectively doing. They're giving the, the different sensors a zero point to start from. When should these sensors be calibrated? The calibration needs to be done whenever the car is aligned or the sensor is changed or any parts that the sensor is, is bolted to or changed. For example, the core support, the front grille, anything that can affect the alignment of that sensor, uh, you really cannot just assume that putting the new sensor back in is going to make it work because the sensor has to be aligned physically with the alignment screws and electronically with our with our TIS machine. Where are the sensors for the pre-collision and the dynamic radar cruise control systems located? Well, previous to 2016 model year, uh, that sensor was bolted to the core support right in front of the radiator. Uh, the 2016 model years and newer, that sensor now is attached to the back of the grill, and it's a forward-facing sensor. How can technicians go about recalibrating these sensors? Well, first of all, it's vitally important that the car's alignment be correct because the sensor is, is going to be adjusted to look at the car's center line. And if the car's center line is not true and the car is not going straight ahead, the sensor is going to get bad information. Mm -hmm. So we start with vehicle alignment. The rear track has to be zero, so the thrust angle has got to be right on, and the front uh, alignment has to be set to the manufacturer's specs. Once the car is aligned properly, then the car is taken to a flat area, and there's a special service tool called a target that's placed approximately 20 feet in front of the car. And that target then reflects back the millimeter wave radar into the sensor. And then we use our tech stream tool to adjust the sensor, both physically through the screw adjustments and electronically through software so that it points where it's supposed to go. Are there any other sensors like this on Toyota and Lexus vehicles that our readers should be aware of? 
There are, yeah. The blind spot monitoring system has similar sensors mounted to the quarter panel on both sides of the of the vehicles that have that system, and those sensors need to be calibrated as well. The stability control relies on the steering wheel having the center zero point calibration, and the backup camera. Whenever you're backing up the car and, and you turn, it has lines on it that guide you into a parking spot. Uh, there's a calibration for that system also. And the other system is the lane keep assist system. That system uses a camera that's behind the windshield that actually looks at the lane markings on the, on the road and helps the driver keep the car in the lane. You know, all these systems, you know, when you don't even think about them, they kind of work like magic. But if you work on the car, and, and, I, and I've been there, the worst thing in the world is you get the car fixed and you're all done and you start it up and you got a check light on. And you think, what did I do wrong? So it really is important that you know about these systems and proactively think about adjusting them when you're doing the estimate so you're not wasting time at the end of your job. So what other resources does Toyota have available about recalibration? The best place to find information on recalibration of our systems is right in our repair manuals. They're all electronic now and you can get to all of our repair manuals through our website, crrtraining.com. You scroll to the bottom, there's a link for TIS. That stands for Toyota's Technical Information System. Mm -hmm. And that's where all of our repair manuals are housed. And again, our, our uh, website is CRR Collision Repair and Refinish Training.com. Easy to remember. Well, Eric and Bill, thank you so much for walking us through this calibration process. You know, vehicle systems that utilize sensors can not only improve driver and occupant safety, but you know, also a driver's satisfaction with their vehicle. But this can only happen if these sensors are properly calibrated and therefore able to function as they were designed to. So for more information on this topic, Eric is also gonna be presenting at SEMA. He's gonna be in an SCRS panel titled TechCrunch, the role of programming and diagnostics in post-repair roadworthiness. And that's gonna be taking place on Thursday, November 5th from 10.30 to 11.30. Toyota is also going to be presenting on the iCar stage from 1 to 1.30, and um, they'll be talking about what Toyota and Lexus repair and refinish technicians need to know when they're working on their cars. And also um, on Friday, November 6th, there'll be another iCar presentation. It'll be a repeat of the presentation on Thursday in case you have a conflict and can't make it. Again, that'll be from 1 to 1.30 on both Thursday and Friday, um, November 5th and 6th. So again, for any more information, please visit crrtraining.com. And you know, we hope you learned something with us at ABRN and Toyota today. Thanks for watching. Krista, thank you so much for this opportunity to share this information with the industry. Thanks, Krista. And remember, you know, it's vitally important that we use OEM parts for all of these sensors because if they're out of adjustment, if the parts aren't correct, uh, you're going to have problems getting the car to work right. And that's something we don't want. I want to keep our customers happy.